Hello and uh, welcome to this lecture on Laplace transforms. This lecture is a part of module 3 of your course on mathematical physics 3. In this lecture, uh, I shall be taking our discussion on integral transforms forward. Uh, in the previous uh, set of lectures, we had been talking about Fourier transforms, which is one type of integral transform. So Laplace transform is another type of integral transform. So here we'll be basically talking about that. So I will first uh, introduce you to uh, the, the notion of Laplace transforms. And then we will just do a few examples. So that will be the end of this lecture. So this is going to be quite a short lecture. So now uh, just to recap uh, what are integral transforms. So if I have a pair of functions f and g and let's say f is a function of t and g is a function of x and suppose they are related in this way that is uh, g of x is given as the integration of f of t multiplied with some function k x comma t and integration is take carried out over t. Oh, and uh, this integration is carried out between the limits a and b where a and b are constants and this function k which is a function of both the variables t and x this function k is known as a kernel function so if this uh, integral exists then we say that g of x is the integral transform of f of t and suppose we have another uh, expression which uh, takes us from uh, g of x it takes us to f of t then that will be the inverse integral transform so in that case we say that g is the integral transform of of f and we can usually write this instead of writing it like this we can simply uh, express it in this way uh, so this i this stylized or uh, calligraphic i uh, represents an integral transform so if you have a fourier transform you could just use a calligraphic f and so on so if the inverse of this equation number one if it exists then we say that f is known as the inverse transform of g of x uh, inverse transform is itself it's a integral type of integral transform okay so coming to laplace transform so given a function f of t it's laplace transform so small f we generally use to uh, use uh, to represent the function which which we are transforming and capital F is uh, what we use to represent its Laplace transforms. Some books they use uh, F tilde, small f tilde. Okay, so here we'll be using capital F of S as the Laplace transform. So uh, for the original function, the variable is t, and in the Laplace transform, the variable is s. So we can obtain the Laplace transform in this way: that is, given function multiplied with e to the power minus st, integrated from zero to infinity. So you can see here when you compare this with this expression. So in this case, uh, a is 0 and b is infinity and the kernel function is e to the power minus st. So the a, b and the kernel function, it depends on specifically what kind of transform we are trying to make. So for Laplace transform, a is 0, b is infinity and the kernel function is e to the power minus st. And uh, we can of course write it like this, uh, a calligraphic L of ft. So it means uh, we are taking the Laplace transform of small f of t. Okay, and this calligraphic L represents the fact that we are doing a Laplace transform operation because you could look at this as an operation. An operation, it takes a operand and gives a result. So operand is a function and the result is a function. So we could look at it as an operation. So that's the logic behind writing it like this. So here, uh, this S of course uh, is uh, real. In general, uh, there would exist some S0 uh, which is also real such that this f of s it exists when s is greater than s naught but does not exist when f is s is less than s naught so there could be so this uh, laplace transform need not exist for all possible values of s okay there could be a set of values of s for which this laplace transform this integral can be evaluated so as a result f of s exists but there could be another set of uh, another range where this integral does not exist so we said at the laplace transform it diverges or it does not exist so th this s naught okay this s naught when s is greater than s naught over here we have a lap existence of a laplace transform 
less than s not less than or equal to s not we will not have any existence of laplace transform so we will see that okay it depends on problem to problem it depends on the function whose uh, laplace transform we are trying to find out the s not value will depend uh, on the specific function that we are trying to transform so when we do the examples we will see so uh, let's come to the first example the first example is a very simple uh, function we want to find out the laplace transform of the constant function that is f of t equal to k that means for all values of t this function will be a constant and that value of the function will be equal to k so the definition of the laplace transform capital f of s is equal to calligraphic l of f of t it's in integration from zero to infinity whatever is the function e to the power minus st dt so all we need to do is just substitute okay this f of t we just substitute k here so k e to the power minus st dt so i can take the k outside because it's anyway a constant so integration of 0 to infinity e to the power minus st dt so integration of e to the power minus st very straightforward it is minus e to the power minus st divided by s which you have to integrate from 0 to infinity now we will see this uh, value s not that we are talking about we will see how this value s not where it arises from here okay because what result it will take it will depend there are three possible cases okay the first case is when s is zero okay if s is zero that means the denominator is zero so then this will become undefined that means f of s it diverges the laplace transform does not exist okay when s is negative when s is negative so we already have a minus sign here and s is negative so overall we'll have s e to the power a positive quantity we'll have e to the power a positive quantity so when you make t to be infinity so we'll have e to the power positive infinity so that will again blow up so when s is negative when s is less than zero again this integral transform will not exist this integral will not exist and we said the laplace transform will not exist but if s is uh, positive then in that case only in that case we will have a uh, um, laplace transform existing so we say that in the first case when s is zero this laplace transform it diverges it also diverges in the second case when s is negative in the third case what will happen is okay minus k by s we are taking it common outside minus k by s because s is positive so e this is e to the power a negative quantity okay s is positive so e to the power a negative quantity and t t takes only positive values so it will be e to the power a negative quantity so we can take one by e to the power that negative quantity so when you put the integration so so uh, i'm sorry when when we have e to the power a negative quantity it will become e to the power 1 by e to the power the modulus of that one okay so when we put the limits here okay when we put the upper limit we'll get 1 by e to the power infinity minus 1 by e to the power 0 so 1 by e to the power infinity this is 1 by infinity so this first quantity is going to become 0 the second quantity we have 1 by 1 so we'll get a minus sign here that minus and this minus will cancel out so as a result the integral transform is going to be k by s so if you have a constant function the value of the function remains the same everywhere the value of the function is k then the integral transform of that is going to be equal to k by s okay so if i ask you what is the integral transform of one right f of t equal to one right k is one then integral transform will be simply one by s okay so we can write it as the mm, calligraphic l of k is equal to k by s and the uh, uh, range of values where this uh, laplace transform is valid is for positive values of s next we will find out the laplace transform of e to the power a t again we go by the definition of the laplace transform this is the definition of the laplace transform all we need to do is this f of t we'll just substitute e to the power a t we'll just uh, place it over here so l of e to the power a t is equal to integration from 0 to infinity e to the power at e to the power minus st dt so now i can take t common here so we'll get a minus s e to the power a minus s into t dt so now when we integrate this we'll get e to the power a minus s t divided by a minus s and we have to substitute the limits now just as before here also we will have three cases okay and the first case is 
this uh, exponent that we have here whatever e is raised to the power of this is equal to 0 that means a minus s is 0 which is s equal to a so in this case of course this denominator will become 0 so as a result this is going to diverge second case a minus s if it is positive okay if it's a positive quantity a minus s is positive that means s is less than a just like in the previous case again in this case it will diverge it is only in the third case when a minus s when this is negative only in that case if a minus s is negative that means s is greater than a only in that case this is going to be definite okay we'll be able to evaluate this integral and as a result we'll have 1 by a minus s okay when you substitute t is infinity here because uh, a minus s is negative so e to the power negative quantity so we'll have 1 by e to the power the same quantity substitute the limits e 1 by e to the power infinity minus 1 by e to the power 0 okay uh, slight mistake I should remove this the 0 to infinity okay uh, this limits I should not write because I have already put the limits put the limits in here so please ignore this 0 and infinity so when you put this 1 by e to the power infinity is 1 by infinity minus 1 by 1 so this will become 0 then there's going to be a minus 1 that minus we can absorb inside this so we'll get a minus s we can write it as s minus a so f of s is equal to 1 by s minus a and we can write the Laplace transform in general suppose I put instead of 1 let's say I put here let's say I put a k here okay let's say I put a k here then this will simply what will happen is we'll just get a k here k divided by s minus a where s is greater than a so in general this is what is going to happen now um, i have left this as an exercise for you all to just try it out at home we now go to example three here uh, we want to find out the laplace transform of t to the power n so as usual that this is the definition of the Laplace transform f of t e to the power minus st dt integrated from 0 to infinity so substitute this function so f of t is nothing but t to the power n so we'll put this right over here so now this uh, integral can be easily evaluated using the integration by parts technique so if you recall what is integration by parts so whenever you have uh, it comes actually integration by parts it comes from the product rule of differentiation so you just write down the product rule of differentiation and then you integrate so if we have an integration from uh, of a product of two functions so one is u another one is v prime dt then that is equal to the product of the two functions evaluated at the two limits minus the integration of uh, derivative of the first function and the second function so here if we take u as t to the power n and v prime as e to the power minus st then we can easily solve this so v prime is e to the power minus st v prime is e to the power minus st and v prime is nothing but dv by dt so we can find out v from here by simply integrating so integrating this integration of e to the power minus st is minus 1 by s e to the power minus st so this is going to be a v uh, by the way we'll just uh, it's important to keep this uh, result in mind so i suggest that maybe if you have a piece of paper you can just note down this result because we will be using this uh, in the next example as well so v equal to minus 1 by s e to the power minus st so we can just substitute uh, d is an equation number one so v is this and u is t to the power n so when you substitute this so we'll have u times v u is t to the power n and uh, v is minus one by s minus one by s e to the power minus st we'll have to evaluate this at the two limits then minus integration from a to b that's zero to infinity u prime now what is u prime u is t to the power n okay so derivative of t to the power n is n t to the power n minus 1 times v again v is minus 1 by s minus 1 by s that minus and this minus will cancel out and we'll get plus 1 by s e to the power minus st now the first term will evaluate to 0 this can be very easily seen because we have e to the power minus st and this will give us 1 by e to the power st so the upper limit when you put the upper limit so 1 by e to the power infinity that will give us 0 and the lower limit this is going to give us 0 because t to the power n 0 to the power n will be 0 so the upper limit when 
on this is going to give us zero and the lower limit on this is going to give us zero so overall both the terms will be zero so this will also evaluate to zero so we'll get f of s is equal to n by s integration from zero to infinity t to the power n minus one e to the power minus st this is a really really interesting result okay so uh, again to recall we are trying to find out the laplace transform of t to the power n so laplace transform t to the power n is integration t to the power n minus e, e to the power t to the power n into e to the power minus st from zero to infinity. So this is basically how you define the Laplace transform for this function, and we have obtained f of s is equal to n by s integration from zero to infinity t to the power n minus one e to the power minus st dt. Now again, this is a kernel of the Laplace transform. Lower limit is zero, upper limit is infinity. So that means we are trying to find out. So this integral it tells us that we are trying to find out the Laplace transform of t to the power n minus one. So this entire integral is the Laplace transform of t to the power n minus one. So therefore we can say from these two f of s the left hand side is same. So Laplace transform of t to the power n is equal to n by s times the Laplace transform of t to the power n minus one. So this is a recursion relation, right? So by if, if you want to find out the Laplace transform of t to the power n, you need to know the Laplace transform of t to the power n minus one. So if I want to say, for, inza, for instance, I want to find out the Laplace transform of t to the power five, then I need the Laplace transform of t to the power four. So if you have, if you happen to know the Laplace transform of the lower uh, order uh, 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 polynomials, lower degree polynomials then you can easily find out the laplace tra transform of the upper deg higher degree polynomials so using this recursive formula we can obtain for n equal to 1 okay so when you put n equal to 1 okay so when you put n equal to 1 so laplace transform of t to the power 1 is laplace transform of t which is equal to n is equal to 1 so 1 by s the laplace transform of t to the power 1 minus 1 which is t to the power 0 that is one so one by s laplace transform of one and uh, this result we already know because we have uh, done in example number one the laplace transform of some constant k is equal to k by s so if i take k as one so laplace transform of one will be equal to one by s so we already have a one by s and the laplace transform of one is going to give us another one by s so this gives us that the laplace transform of t is equal to one by s square so m for n equal to 1, the Laplace transform will be 1 by s square. So now we can use the recursion relation to find out what will be the Laplace transform for n equal to 2. So Laplace transform of t square, okay, n equal to 2, t square is equal to, so we put a 2 here, so it gives us t square, then we put a 2 here, so we have 2 by s, Laplace transform of 2 t to the power 2 minus 1, t to the power 2 minus 1 is t, so Laplace transform of t. And we have already evaluated the Laplace transform of t, which is 1 by s square. Okay, so 2 by s into 1 by s square. So this gives us the Laplace transform of t square is 2 by s cube. So for n equal to 3, in a similar way, Laplace transform of t cube is equal to so n equal to 3. So 3 by s Laplace transform of t to the power 3 minus 1. So 3 by s Laplace transform of t square. Laplace transform of t square we have already calculated, we have already obtained here, which is 2 by s cube. So 3 by s into 2 by s cube. So this is going to give us the Laplace transform of t cube equal to 6 by s to the power 4. Now uh, we can also write it in this way. The first one, 1 by s square, we can write it as 1 factorial by 2 square. Second one can be written as 2 factorial by s, s cube. So 1 factorial by s square second one is 2 factorial by s cube and the third one 6 is nothing but 3 factorial by s to the power 4 so in general so when n equal to 1 1 factorial n equal to 2 2 factorial n equal to 3 3 factorial n equal to 1 we have s square n equal to 2 we have s cube n equal to 4 n equal to 3 we have s to the power 4 so in general we can say that the laplace transform of t to the power n is equal to n factorial by s to the power n plus 1 for s greater than 0 because this greater than 0 has this condition has to be satisfied i leave it to you to figure out why this condition has to be satisfied the clue is in the way we have evaluated this integral okay the clue is the way we have evaluated this integral from there you can obtain the condition that s must be positive 
So, uh, here we have used a recursive formula to find out this recursive formula to find out a uh, general expression for the Laplace transform t to the power n. But there is a alternate method that uh, allows out you uh, allows us to find out the Laplace transform t to the power n in a much more straightforward way, and this is by using the gamma function. Okay, if you recall, what is the gamma function? In the, I think in the previous semester uh, we had already discussed the gamma function. So gamma of m is defined as integration from zero to infinity x to the power m minus one e to the power minus x dx. So and this will be equal to m minus one factorial if m is an integer okay so a uh, gamma function basically um, it extends the um, idea of the factorial okay so if m is uh, an integer then it will be simply m minus 1 factorial if m is not an integer then it will be this uh, integral so this is basically a gamma function now you can see here it has got e to the power minus st the lo lower and the upper limits they are very similar to uh, our laplace transforms so maybe we can use this somewhere over here but we need to do some kind of uh, substitutions so we have uh, the laplace transform t to the power n is 0 to infinity t to the power n e to the power minus st dt let's call this equation number one so now we let's make a substitution okay let's say this st that we have here let's call it as x okay so if x is equal to st then t will be equal to x by s and if we differentiate this dt will be equal to dx by s okay so x is equal to st this implies t is equal to x by s that means dt is equal to dx by s so we just need to substitute all of this on the right hand side of equation number one so on the right hand side of equation number one so t to the power n t is x by s so t to the power n is x by s whole to the power n e to the power minus st so this will become e to the power minus st is x so e to the power minus x and dt is dx by s so dt is dx by s so this is what we get so i can take this s so uh, s to the power 1 by s to the power n into 1 by s so we'll get 1 by s to the power n plus 1 integration from 0 to infinity x to the power n e to the power minus x dx you can see here almost we are it's looking like the gamma function okay so now what we'll do is we'll make a substitution here again the substitution is let m equal to n plus 1 okay we'll introduce another quantity m which is equal to n plus 1 so if m equal to n plus 1 that means n equal to m minus 1 n is equal to m minus 1 m minus 1 e to the power minus x dx and we'll, it, this will be equal to 1 by s to the power m so now you can immediately recognize this this integral is nothing but the gamma function okay so 1 by s to the power n gamma m now of course we are not using m here we are using in the original problem we had n not m so we substitute it back here so we will get the laplace transform of t to t power n will be equal to gamma of m is equal to n plus 1 so gamma of n plus 1 divided by s to the power n plus 1 now what will happen if uh, this n if n is an integer then what will happen so gamma function gamma of whatever is the argument if it's integer then it will be that argument minus 1 okay so what is the argument argument is n plus 1 so this argument minus 1 so n plus 1 minus 1 that factorial of that so that will because that will give us n factorial so n factorial s to the power n plus 1 for s greater than 0 so it's exactly the same result that we had obtained earlier now how do we get this condition s greater than 0 you can get the condition from here what will happen if this condition is not satisfied you see s we are assuming that s is positive so because of the fact that s is positive then x varies linearly with t so whenever t is 0 and t is infinity x is also 0 and infinity but if x was not uh, positive if we allow x to be negative also then this uh, limits will not remain the same the limits will change so in that case will not be able to evaluate it that way so this if you are getting this result it is only valid for s greater than 0 so the same condition can be obtained here as well now coming to the last example uh, we want to find out the Laplace transform of sine a t sine where a is a constant again definition of Laplace transform is this so standard procedure we just substitute wherever it is f of t we'll just put sine of a t so Laplace transform of sine a t is equal to integration e to the power minus st sine a t dt from 0 to infinity 
so now uh, how do we evaluate this okay this is a definite integral so to evaluate this definite integral what we can do is we will first evaluate the indefinite integral okay we'll first if find out what is the indefinite integral that is this indefinite integral then we'll just substitute the limits the lower and the upper limits and that will give us the value of this definite integral so just consider this indefinite integral e to the power minus st sin at dt we'll just evaluate this one so how do you evaluate this of course we can use the uh, integration by parts okay so you can uh, verify this for, for yourself u v prime uh, integration u v prime dt is equal to u v uh, 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 minus integration u prime v dt so uh, v prime i'm again i'm taking like uh, in uh, example number two uh, v prime i'm again taking as e to the power minus st so v will be equal to minus one by s e to the power minus st and u is sine a t okay and then minus uh, u prime v u what is u prime sine of at differentiation of sine at is a cos at and v of course is minus 1 by s e to the power minus st dt so this minus and this minus will give us a plus okay so we'll get a plus here so minus e to the power st by s sine at plus we take this a and s we take it outside so a by s integration e to the power minus st cos at dt so let's call this equation number two now what we'll do is we need to evaluate this integral okay so again we'll follow the same steps okay how we had done is we evaluated this indefinite integral this was a sign of course we if you consider if you compare these two okay these indefinite integrals so when we did a uh, when we evaluated the sign integral we get a we got a cos integral so if I try to evaluate this one, okay, this cos integral, it should again give me a sine integral because again integration by parts. You're differentiating cos, then you should get again you should get a sine integral. So we will now try to evaluate the same indefinite integral in the same way as we had done over here. That's so that will give us a sine integral, which is nothing but i, and then we can from there we can actually combine those terms and evaluate this. So we consider we apply the integration by, by parts on the second term on the integral in the second term on the right hand side. So e to the power minus st cos at dt. Okay, so we take v prime as e to the power minus st and u as cos at. So v prime is e to the power minus st. So that means v will be equal to minus e to the power minus st by s, and uh, u is cos at minus. Again, this is v same as before and uh, u prime what is differentiation of cos at differentiation of cos at will be equal to minus a sine at so this minus there are three minus signs minus minus and minus so two of this minus signs will become plus which leaves us with only one minus sign okay so we'll have minus so this is the first term and then we have a by s coming out and we have e to the power minus st sine at and this you see okay this is the indefinite integral that we were trying to evaluate in the first place okay this is the indefinite integral eval that we're trying to integrate in the first place so this integral we'll just substitute back over here so the first term will remain as it is this is the first term second term we have a by s and this integral is that is this integral is equal to this these two terms Okay, so these two terms we'll just substitute over here instead of this in, in the place of this integral we'll just substitute this over here so this is what we got so i equal to this one so now what we do is we just open this up so we have first term then we have a by this s will combine here so a by s square e to the power minus st cos at and then we'll get a square by s square we'll get this and we have integration e to the power minus st sine at dt so this is nothing but your i itself okay so this is nothing but we just replace this integral we'll replace it with i and we'll now take it on to the left hand side so we have one plus a square by, by a square i which is equal to this one so i have taken e to the power uh, minus uh, e to the power minus st by s i have taken it common so it will give us sine at plus a by s into cos at so uh, add these two so we'll get s squared plus a squared by s squared. So of course one of this s will this s will cancel out one of the s over here, and we'll take it onto the other side. So we will get i is equal to which is equal to e to the power minus st sine at dt. We'll take it on this side. So this s cancels out one of the s here. So we'll get s by 
a square plus a square e to the power minus st of course there is a minus sign here sine a t plus a by s cos a t let's call this equation number four so uh, here we are so we have laplace now we are trying to find out the laplace transform of sine a t which will be this integral evaluate um, uh, this definite integral we have found out the indefinite integral the indefinite integral is this okay times sum of these two terms now all we need to do is if you want to evaluate this we have to substitute the limits 0 to infinity we have to substitute the limits on the right hand side of equation number 4 so using equation number 4 in equation number 1 the Laplace transform of sine of at is equal to minus s by a square plus a square e to the power minus st sine at plus a by s cos at we have to substitute the limit 0 to infinity now please note that we have to substitute the limits only in this term not in this term because this is the integration with respect to t okay and uh, here this quantity inside the bracket it does not have any t term it has got only s term so we don't substitute anything over here we need to substitute over here here and here okay so these three we take together that's where we'll have to substitute the limits because these contain the t variable so minus s by uh, s square plus a square okay the upper limit will anyway give us zero because e to the power minus st okay and from there we get the condition that s must be positive so e to the power minus st so one by e to the power infinity so that is going to can anyway give us zero the lower limit when you put zero here this is going to give us one anyway so not an issue here and we have sine zero plus a by s cos zero over here so s by minus s by s square plus a square times so we'll get another minus sign here and uh, sine zero is zero cos zero is one so we have a by s here so this s will cancel out this s and as a result the laplace transform of sine at will be equal to a by s square plus a square s greater than zero the s greater than zero condition is coming because because of that because of that we are able to evaluate this and make it zero at the upper limit so this gives us a laplace transform of sine of at so similarly cos at is equal to s by s square plus a square where again s has to be positive uh, this i'm leaving it to you as an exercise for you to try at home so these are the problems that you have to do uh, yeah and then one more thing that you can do is um, you can f uh, you can find out the laplace transform of uh, the hyperbolic cos okay if you remember i had given you the expression for hyperbolic cos you can obtain write down the hyperbolic sign and hyperbolic cos using exponential functions okay so use those uh, representations of the hyperbolic sign and cos functions and find out what is the what are their laplace transforms okay and once you get the result once you get the hyperbolic cos then what you can do is you can use this identity if you remember this is the identity between trigonometric function and hyperbolic function cos x equal to hyperbolic cos i x so using this you have already cal you have already evaluated the hyperbolic cos function and using this one please check if uh, whatever uh, uh, this uh, laplace transform of cos that you got okay if uh, the same result the result that you got here the same result can also be obtained using this trigonometric identity you can perform the same exercise for the hyperbolic sign as well using this identity so uh, with this we come to the end of uh, this lecture so uh, please refer to uh, the text that is given here especially the chapter which is given in uh, riley hobson and benz and uh, uh, this uh, on laplace transform the the chapter on integral transforms in uh, arfcan is really given in a very uh, well uh, understandable way and you can also go through the uh, articles which are given in wolfram.com as well as the wikipedia page so uh, please do the exercises and in case you have any queries please please feel free to get in touch with me so this is the end of the lecture thank you